Hello everyone. After the SARS-CoV-2 virus was identified as the cause of the COVID-19 pandemic, there have been many vaccines in development against it in the European Union, North and South America, Africa and Asia. In this video, let us dive into these vaccines and their status. Here, SARS-CoV-2 will be called COVID and the 2004 SARS virus will be called SARS. I use clinical databases in the US, China, World Health Organization, Japan, and the European Union. A vaccine works by introducing viral particles or antigens to the antigen-presenting cells, and the antigen-presenting cells will present the antigen to the helper T cells. The helper T cells will then trigger B cells to produce antibodies against the antigen and activate killer T cells to kill the infected cells. In the future, the B cells and killer T cells will recognize and fight the same virus. All the COVID vaccines need to consider a few questions. First, which viral antigen should the vaccine use? COVID makes 29 proteins. Right now, most of the COVID vaccines in clinical trial focus on the spike or S protein. COVID uses the spike protein to dock onto a cell and then enter. Second, which form of the viral particle does the vaccine contain? Viral DNA, RNA, or protein? Third, how does a vaccine enter the cell? as whole COVID viruses, packaging the COVID genetic material in nanoparticles, or have the COVID gene piggyback onto another virus or vector. Before commercial use, a vaccine needs to demonstrate that it is effective and safe in clinical trial. Phase 1 tests the vaccine's safety, Phase 2 tests the vaccine's effectiveness in a small group of people, and Phase 3 tests the vaccine's safety and effectiveness in a large population. There are many different types of vaccines in clinical trial for COVID. Inactivated virus, DNA vaccine, RNA vaccine, oral probiotic, non-replicating viral carriers or vectors, virus-like particles, protein-based vaccines, loading the vaccine onto immune cells first, or repurposing other vaccines. Inactivated virus vaccines are made by collecting blood samples from infected patients and cultivating the virus before inactivating it with a chemical agent. The method is safe and a proven technology. The inactivated virus vaccine in use include hepatitis A, flu, polio, and rabies. However, inactivated virus vaccines are not as potent as live vaccines, so you may need to get multiple shots to achieve the same level of immunity. Several companies are making inactivated COVID vaccines. The vaccine by the Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences is in phase one. The NCT number below is from the US database. The vaccine by Sinopharm is also in phase one. Its ID number is from the Chinese database. Institute of Medical Biology in China and Immuniter, a Canadian company, are also having their respective vaccines in phase one. The Chinese company Sinovac has a vaccine in phase 2. Sinovac is also testing its vaccine with the Buntantan Institute in Brazil in a phase 3 trial. The DNA vaccine contains a circular DNA that encodes the COVID spike protein, packaged in liposome or nanoparticles. DNA vaccine is easier to produce than conventional vaccine, but the technology is unproven and does not have an approved vaccine in the market. Innovio, an American company with experience in developing the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome MERS vaccine, and the International Vaccine Institute in Korea, are working on a DNA vaccine in a combined phase 1 and 2 trial. The vaccine by Cadillo Healthcare in India is also in a combined phase 1 and 2 trial. On the other hand, Jinsin, a Korean company, and Osaka University in Japan have trials in phase 1. RNA vaccine packages messenger RNA that makes the COVID spike protein in liposome or lipid nanoparticles. The lipid nanoparticle can improve the delivery of the vaccine to the target cells. The RNA vaccine may be more effective since it skips the DNA to RNA step and goes to viral protein production directly, but it remains unproven and has no approved vaccine in the market. CureVac, a German-based company, and the Chinese People's Liberation Army both have their vaccines in Phase 1. BioNTech, another German company, is having a combined Phase 1 and 2 trial with Pfizer, one of the biggest pharma companies. Finally, Moderna, a U.S. company, is finishing up Phase 2 for its vaccine. The oral vaccine is made with probiotic bacteria that deliver the COVID spike gene to target cells. The vaccine is oral, no shots needed, but the technology is unproven and has no approved product. 
The bacterial technology platform is by Simvivo, a Canadian company. The vaccine is in phase one. Non-replicating vector or carrier is used because some viruses, such as adenovirus, are good at entering the cells, and it makes sense to have the COVID spike gene piggyback onto them. This strategy has had success in animals, but not yet in humans. But its downside is that the immune system has seen the carrier virus before and developed immunity. It may be less likely to react against the COVID spike protein made in the vector. The Gamalaya Research Institute in Russia is conducting a phase one trial. The Jenner Institute at the University of Oxford has previous experience in developing a MERS vaccine. Now it's developing a COVID vaccine with AstraZeneca, another big pharma. The vaccine is undergoing a combined phase one and two trial, and is tested in the UK and South Africa. A Chinese company called Cansino has previously developed an Ebola vaccine. Now it's using the same framework for a COVID vaccine. The trial is in phase two. All three teams are using different adenoviruses as their carrier virus. China has just approved Cansino's vaccine for emergency use in the military, even though it has not finished phase two. Virus-like particles are assembled in lower organisms such as yeast cells, plant cells, or insect cells, as opposed to test tubes. It's a proven technology. For example. The human papilloma virus vaccine and hepatitis B vaccine are virus-like particles approved for commercial use. However, virus-like particles are difficult to produce. Medicago, a Canadian company, is making a COVID virus-like particle and using plants as incubators. The particles they produce do resemble the COVID virus. The vaccine is now in phase one. Instead of delivering the DNA or RNA to make the spike protein in the antigen-presenting cells, the protein-based vaccine delivers the viral protein straight up. The technology is cheaper and easier to make than the conventional vaccine. However, the technology is relatively unproven with no commercial product. Vaccine, an Australian company, is making a vaccine consisting of COVID spike protein and its proprietary adjuvant, which activates the immune system without causing excessive inflammation. Clover Biopharmaceuticals is making a vaccine consisting of trimers or three of the same parts of the COVID spike protein. Anhui Zhifei Biopharmaceutical in China has a trial in phase one, and lastly, Novavax, an American company, combines the spike protein with its proprietary adjuvant Matrix M in its vaccine, and the vaccine is in a combined phase one and two trial. Then there's the strategy of loading the vaccine onto immune cells and then giving the loaded cells to the patient. Antigen-presenting cells and dendritic cells are immune cells that present viral antigens. They can be engineered with a vaccine to express viral antigens, such as the COVID spike protein. The Shenzhen Genome Immune Medical Institute is working on both the antigen-presenting cells plus vaccine and the dendritic cell plus vaccine combos. Ivita Biomedical. An American company is testing dendritic cells loaded with COVID antigens in a combined phase one and two trial. Lastly, there's the repurposing of existing vaccines. BCG is a vaccine for tuberculosis. MMR is the vaccine against measles, mumps, and rubella. There are recent publications showing that these vaccines stimulate the immune system in a general way and may have protective effects against COVID. As for using BCG against COVID, there are many clinical trials in the EU, Africa, South America, Asia, and North America. As for the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine against COVID, the Kaiser El Alani Hospital in Egypt has a trial in phase three. If the BCG or MMR are found to be effective against COVID, they can be approved much more quickly than other vaccines. In summary, there are established as well as new and unproven technologies being used for COVID vaccine development. While some companies have lots of experience in vaccine development, especially with SARS or MERS, many other companies just pivoted to COVID or viruses recently. A lot of viruses are being developed against the same spike protein that is on the surface of COVID. The reasoning is that. SARS and COVID both need their respective spike protein to enter cells via the ACE receptor. Previous SARS vaccine against the SARS spike protein was promising. There are data showing that inhibiting the interaction between the COVID spike protein and the ACE receptor on human cells inhibited infection. Therefore, a vaccine against the COVID spike protein is likely to succeed. The current global effort to develop a COVID vaccine has been incredibly massive and quick. 
The traditional timeline of vaccine development is about 10 years. Even the Ebola vaccine took five years. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, if the process is really smooth, there could be a COVID vaccine for emergency use by early 2021. That said, scaling the vaccine production for billions of people would take much longer. According to industry data, more than 90% of the vaccine candidates fail in clinical trials. A vaccine has a probability of success of about 6%. We have talked about over 20 vaccines here. Other estimates put the number over 40. So assuming a 6% success rate, there will be at least one that works in the end, and that is probably all we need. Next, we will look at the COVID vaccines that are in preclinical trial. Please subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.